Hi everyone and welcome to another data science mock interview with Exponent. Today we're going to talk a little bit about linear regression with our guest Ben. And thank you so much for being here Ben. Uh, would you take a moment to introduce yourself to our viewers? Hey everyone, my name is Ben. Um, I run my own data science mentoring company where I help students break into jobs in the data science field um, coming from various different backgrounds. So I teach data science, machine learning, and machine engineering uh, from my company Breakthrough Data Science. And I've been doing that for about seven years. If you're enjoying this video, you can watch dozens more of videos like this at tryexponent.com. Check out our real interview questions with full written solutions. Over a million people use Exponent to ace their interviews in product management, software engineering, engineering management, machine learning, data science, and much, much more. Get started for free at tryexponent.com. If you could tell me what are some of the advantages and limitations of uh linear regression? So probably the biggest advantage of linear regression over other models is going to be interpretability. So what does this mean? As we've already seen, linear regression has this formula that goes with it, with it right? Our y hat equals Um, equals theta times x. And so it's literally just summing up all of our different variables times some coefficient. So we're able to see what is the effect of an individual coefficient on a target. This allows us to both make large explanatory claims, like what we were talking about earlier, um, around what is the effect of a feature on a target, as well as allowing us to diagnose potential problems with our regression. Um, and it's very, very flexible to deal with many different kinds of data, to deal with interactions, um, but it doesn't do that automatically. We'll get into that in a second. Um, another advantage is gonna be speed. So linear regression is very fast because again, in order to predict, we have a very simple equation. And so computationally, it really doesn't take much on our, uh, on our machines to be able to calculate the result of a linear regression given new input data, because we can just run the equation and input the data and boom, we're done. As compared to some more intensive um, algorithms like SVM, which can take a much longer time. When you're dealing with um, limits of linear regression, Um, I'd say one major limit is the ability to deal with nonlinear relationships. So in terms of nonlinear relationships, you know, we've looked at in this interview a couple times, these uh, correlation maps where you're looking at something that looks roughly like a linear relationship, but that's not always going to be the case. You know, you have the classic one where you're trying to uh, do a, draw a decision boundary around that's like a circle um, or to, to, in, to separate your zeros from your ones. And our linear regression is going to have a hard time with that. Um, this can also look like you have polynomial terms where you have these sorts of relationships where a line isn't going to capture that. And you can do this, you can solve this by using polynomial terms. Um, you can also look at interactions between variables. So sometimes um, variables will interact with each other. It will interact with each other in a way that affects how that variable um, affects the target variable, right? So two, two features together, depending upon the value of a different feature, might affect the effect of a target on another variable. And linear regression has a hard time dealing with that, but you can introduce interaction terms as well. The problem is that this is labor intensive and also a little bit iffy sometimes um, as far as making sure that we're not creating too much complexity here. Whereas something like random forest um, is going to automatically deal with polynomial terms and automatically deal with interaction terms without us having to do any of this. Um, similarly, another advantage of random forest or tree-based models over a linear regression is going to be dealing with highly dimensional data. So 
in this particular case, what we're saying is uh, we have data with a ton, a ton of features um, and not as much data as we have features or, or that, that there's that there's a lot that there's a low ratio of features to data. And in fact, if you have um, more features, if n features is uh, greater than n data, uh, this actually you cannot compute a linear regression in this particular case um, using standard OLS. You can still do it with gradient descent, but uh, essentially linear regression is going to have a hard time assigning what we were talking about before, figuring out for each coefficient, right? What is the what is the value? What is the effect that that coefficient has on the target variable? It's going to have a really hard time with the more and more and more features that you get. Um, and, and in fact, it's going to run into something called the curse of dimensionality at a certain point where it's, it's really going to break down. But essentially, um, those would I'd say were the, the two major limits to linear regression um, as compared to potentially other, other options here. Thank you so much for joining us, Ben. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this interview, please visit tryexponent.com to view our data science interview course material where you'll have access to a library of interview questions, expert coaching, and peer-to-peer -peer mock interviews. Good luck on your next interview, and thanks for watching. <music>